Hi everyone, it's Nicole Hanna here from Nicole Hanna Jewelry and YouTube Score Art Yourself. And today I'm going to share with you how to make this Amethyst Wings Seed Bead Embroidered Project. First we're going to start with some materials. Um, what I generally like to start with is a piece of stiff felt and this is what I'll be doing all my actual stitching on. Um, this is what I'll glue the, the cabochons to, whatever stones that I'm working with. Um, the stiff felt that I use is just a 99 cent 8 by 10 inch piece from the craft store. You can buy Lacey's Stiff Stuff that's made specifically for bead embroidery projects, but it's two to three times more expensive. And honestly, this does the job just fine. Uh, so you're also going to need your stones, of course, and you're going to need some way to secure those stones to the felt. Now, although the beaded bezel that we're going to create will secure the stone, the glue here, I'm using E6000, that'll really help keep it in place while you bezel it. Now, this glue came with a small tip, but honestly, the tip is useless. It fills up with glue, which hardens, and you can't use it for anything. So actually, now I just use it as a stopper um, for the opening of the glue itself. I just use the tip and stick it right in the opening of the glue, uh, and that's how I use it. And if I need to get into small spaces with the glue, then I just use a toothpick. Another thing you're going to need is a small pair of scissors. These are actually just bathroom scissors, you know, that you can get in a grocery store. Uh, but they're small and they work great for getting into nooks and crannies when you're cutting. And then you're going to need um, some beading needles. I prefer size 10 or 12. Um, and it can really depend on what I'm doing at the time when I choose between them. If I'm doing really delicate work, working with really small beads, then I'll use the smaller size needle. Uh, you're going to need size 11 Delicas, uh, Delica seed beads, and you're going to need some thread. I prefer Wildfire 0 .006 um, in size, and I tend to use black. You, it comes in white, it comes in a smoke uh, color, but I prefer the black. Uh, overall, I think it's just a little more universal. Some people use the white and then they even color it with markers to match whatever backing they're going to use. Then I like to have on hand a pair of needle nose or flat nose pliers and I'll show you what I how I use those later on. And you're going to need some size 15 seed beads in a coordinating color to the size 11. Um, you, know, you can mix it up and use whatever colors you want. In this case, I'm using a mauve, and the size 11 is a lavender color. And you're also going to need a piece of backing, and I love Ultra Suede. It's super soft, super comfortable for all day wear, and it comes in a variety of colors. So as to coordinate with the purples, I'm just using like a peachy orange uh, that, I'm, that I really like. So to get started, we're going to cut about, I would say you can start with uh, three to four feet of thread. The longer your thread, the more chance there's going to be that you're going to end up with knots and tangles. Uh, it is a pain to change out thread if you don't have to. So I personally use much longer lengths, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I would suggest using um, shorter lengths, you know, three to four feet at a time. I'm choosing a size 12. You can see the difference here in between the sizes of the needles and both will work for this project, but I tend, I'm really rough on my needles when I do these. So I try to choose the sturdier ones that are a little thicker, uh, cause otherwise I'll just demolish needles left and right. So the trick to trying to thread these needles because the holes are super small and the thread is actually um, pretty thick for these needles. So this is when the pliers come in handy and I'll pinch the end of that thread with the pliers and it'll create this sort of paddle. It'll flatten that thread out real nice and thin and create this paddle that will pass through the eye of the needle much easier.
and you still have to fiddle with it while while you're working but once you get it to catch like this then you just use the pliers to grip the end of it and pull it through uh, about seven or eight inches you don't need to pull it through the the eye of the needle too far then on the other end i'm going to create a double triple knot i just want a nice big knot that's going to hold uh, when i start my stitching so i'm going to just tie a single knot and then tie a knot over it and then tie a knot over that and uh, create something that's pretty decent size that won't slip through the felt when you begin stitching Once I've got my knot secured, I'm going to begin my project. So usually what I'll do is I'll just pick a random spot uh, to begin my stitching. And so I will begin by pushing the needle from the back to the front in whatever random spot I choose right next to the stone that I'm going to bezel. Pull it taut all the way through until that knot catches. And then I'm going to pick up two size 11 delicas. I prefer the delicas to the round because for bezels they stack much neater. And you'll see what I mean by stacking in a little bit. So once I've picked up the two beads, I'm going to run them all the way down to the, to the base and lay them flat against the felt. Nice and secure next to one another. Then I'm going to run the needle from front to back through the felt right at the end of those two beads. For doing bezels, you need to have an even number of beads all the way around the stone. So by picking up two at a time, you're always sure to have an even number. You don't lose count. You don't have to worry about keeping count. You know to just always pick up two at a time. So then what I do is I'm going to run my needle from back to front, back up through the felt, uh, right at the beginning of those two seed beads. Then I'm going to run my needle through both of those seed beads and that will stitch it to the felt. That's totally secure at this point. And even if you're not bezeling and you're just embroidering any random design without, with or without stones, uh, this is the type of stitching that I prefer. I am by no means an expert on bead embroidery. I just like to do it. I do it in my spare time. Uh, so I actually am not well versed in the names of stitches and things like that I just do it and uh, so if I seem a little uneducated in my terminology that's why so I picked up two more beads laid them flat against the previous two running my needle from front to back through the felt now I'm going to run my needle from back to front through the felt from at the third bead from the last See, so I'm in between the first and second beads there. Then I'm going to run my needle through the last three beads. Pick up two more seed beads. Run them down the thread, flush against the previous beads. Sew through the felt from front to back at the end of those beads. Bring your needle back up the felt, through the felt, um, from back to front, from the third bead from the end. And then you're going to run through the last three beads. So basically you're picking up two beads, you're securing two beads, and then you're running through the previous three beads. I just like to do this personally. You could probably just run through the two beads that you set, uh, but I like to do three just for that added security. Now I went ahead and worked my way all the way around the stone, and I'm left with this little space here. Now remember you have to end with an even number. 
And sometimes this means that there's a little space um, between the beginning and end of the round or this row. And sometimes it means that the last two beads are going to slightly bunch up on each other because there's not quite enough room for them. You just have to make do. Sometimes you get lucky and it's a perfect fit. This one um, looks like it's going to be pretty close to being a perfect fit for me. Might be able to fit two more snug right in that last space there. And I've definitely worked on with an even number, picking up two at a time each time. So to close this first row, I'm going to go three from the last, like I have been. I'm going to run through the last three beads, and then I'm going to catch the first one or two beads at the beginning of this row. Just to really close this row and secure it. And that's the end of the first row. So now to create this bezel, we got to step up and go and create the second row that's going to lay on top of this first row. Now see how I like to catch my thread under my thumb. That keeps it out of the way. So I'm going to pick up a single bead. And I'm going to skip the bead that's right next to the where the thread is exiting. I'm going to skip that bead. And then I'm going to run my needle through the bead next to that one. So I'm skipping a bead, and then I'm going to run through a bead. See how it kind of sits on top of that first row? Now I'm going to pick up another bead. I'm going to skip the bead next to the thread where the thread exits, and then I'm going to go through the following bead. And now that bead should stack nicely on the first row, leaving a little bit of space between this one and the previous bead. So then I'm going to pick up a bead, skip that bead next to the thread, and go through the following bead. And basically you're just going to repeat this process all the way around. And this is why you need the even number of beads, because you're always skipping a bead and going through a bead. show you one more time here. Skipping that bead right after the thread, going through the next bead. And then you just work your way all the way around. So now I'm getting to the end of the, the second row, and we're going to have to prepare to step up to the third row. So I'm going to pick up a bead, and I'm going to go through that very last bead in the first row, but then I'm also going to go up through the first bead of the second row. I try to catch both of those beads with my needle at the same time, just makes it a little easier than going through one bead at a time. See, I've caught both those beads, and now I'm going through, and I'll be all set up to start the third row. See my, my needle, my thread is now exiting the first bead of the second row. So I'm going to pick up a bead, and I'm going to work my way around. I'm going to go through the bead that's uh, next to my thread. Pick up a bead, go through the next bead. Pick up a bead, go through the next bead. And 
You want to be careful how your thread is positioned. You see, you want your thread always to the left of that needle. If your thread ends up to the right of the needle, or if you cross it over the top of the needle, um, you're going to run into problems where you're going to end up tying a knot around that bead that you're currently trying to, to thread. So you always want to, I like to catch my, that thread underneath my thumb to just keep it out of the way. So now I've worked all the way around. This is a total of four rows that I'm finishing up. And really how you gauge um, how many rows you need is you just want to see these size 11 beads just start to curve around the top of your stone. So I've finished up this row and what I've noticed is I'm starting to run out of thread. So what I'm going to do, because I know I'm not going to have enough thread to complete the next two rows that I need to complete. So I'm going to finish off this thread by running it back through some of the beads in the previous three rows. And I'm going to try to get my thread all the way back down to the felt. So you just follow the position of the beads, try to run your thread through the correct pattern. It's a nice checkerboard sort of pattern. So you run your, your needle through whatever corresponding bead is right next to where your thread is exiting. And you can work your way back and forth to really secure the end of that thread in. I usually like to pass through uh, at least four beads um, when I'm trying to secure the end of my thread. So I've sort of worked my way a little bit um, to the left from the end of my fourth row. And now I'm even switching it around and starting to move back to the right again. And that'll really secure it. Like that thread's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to pass through a couple more beads going towards the right. And I'm going to work my way back down to the bottom row uh, so I can pass my needle through the felt without that thread really showing anywhere. And it can be tricky. You really have to fiddle with it. You're going to bend your needles um, pretty badly. They're, mine tend to get real misshapen. I'm real rough. But another thing to keep in mind is you don't want to be too rough when you're passing through beads that have already been passed through uh, a number of times. Because if the bead breaks, it's really not fun to have to undo rows in order to replace that broken bead. Yeah, you can see how bent my needle is starting to get. So now I've worked my way all the way down. I'm running it back through the felt to the back of the piece. And then I'm just going to flip my piece over and I'm going to run my needle. I'm going to catch a little bit of that felt on the back to kind of create a closing stitch. And when there's just a little loop of thread left, um, I'm going to run my needle through that loop and that's going to really close up that stitch nice and neat. And I'll do that two or three times, at least twice usually when I'm finishing off a thread. And a backing is even going to be glued to this as well. So really your thread's not going to go anywhere. So this is my second stitch and then I'm just going to trim it off and uh, re-thread my needle with a, a fresh length of thread. Okay, I've got a new length of thread on my needle. I've tied a knot at the end. Now I'm just going to run it from the back to the front through the felt. And I'll get, you can start randomly at any point when you're, when you're adding a new thread like this, so long as you've completed the previous row. If you had to stop in the middle of a row, then you obviously want your needle to end up where you stopped. So now I'm just going to work my way back up through each row of beads till I get to the top row. 
Now we're going to be starting, uh, once I get to the top row, we're going to be starting adding the size 15 beads because the size 15 beads are much smaller. It's going to start to pull this bezel in over the top of the cabochon, really creating a nice secure setting. I don't personally like to rely on just the glue to hold my stones down, so I tend to bezel absolutely every stone that I have on a bead embroidered project and I just think it's it's pretty and it's it's a very elegant look so you do these rows with the size 15 the exact same way you did the previous three rows you pick up a bead you go through a bead you pick up a bead you go through a bead Now I've completed one and a half whole rows and I want to show you something here on this stone. It's not quite as bad, but if you're working with a stone that has a corner, one of the things you may find when you're, you're getting to your final rows is that if I try to add another bead there in, in between those, the two beads of the previous row, it might bunch up because there might not be enough room. We're going to see here if I have enough room to pass between here, because when you have a corner, those beads sort of compress in on each other. It looks like I'm able to fit that bead in, but if you can't, don't worry about it. Just remove the bead and just run your thread straight through those two beads without adding a bead there. And that'll pull those two beads together and close off that corner. So now I just finished the row uh, as I did with the previous rows. And then just like when I had to end my previous length of thread, I'm going to run this thread back through the rows from top to bottom so that I can get my needle back down to the felt. And it's always good to have some decent tension. Um, the wildfire thread is a fantastic, very strong thread and will hold up to um, really pulling and, and getting it snug. Just remember if it feels like you can't get that needle through the bead that you're working on to get back down to the bottom, don't try it because there's a possibility you could break that bead and then it's a, it's a pain to have to try to insert another bead into that spot or tear it apart and redo those rows. See, I'm actually having a lot of trouble getting my needle through. But it looks like I'm able to pull it through without a problem. Now I'm going to run my thread or my needle from front to back through the felt. And because I have quite a bit of length left, I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to use that length to begin the bezel around the next stone because I'm going to set um, three total stones uh, in this piece with the, with the bezel settings. So what I like to do is bezel one stone at a time because sometimes if you just start gluing stones down, you find out that there's big gaps between the stones once you get all the beads set. So I just kind of fiddle around, make sure, you know, I know I have a rough idea where I want to set the bead and then I add the glue to the back. I just kind of dot it on. It looks like I'm putting a lot on, um, but I'm really not. It's just small little dots of, of the glue. The glue is very strong smelling too, uh, so you might want to use it near a window in a, in a ventilated area with a fan going. So then I just position that and I definitely want to leave enough room for another row of beads because I'm going to bezel around this stone too. And even a little more room than I think I'm going to need because as you work your way up over the side of the stone. Uh, you find out that you really need more room than you think. In order to get that third stone on there, I'm going to have to adjust a little bit. 
and I just keep adjusting until I'm I'm happy where the, with the position of that second stone. I definitely want to give myself plenty of room to bezel that third stone on. And there we go. I'm happy with the placement. Now you can sort of see, um, I press it down nice and firm and you really ultimately, you really should wait a little bit for it to dry. I'm pretty impatient though. And I just start working right away. Uh, you'll notice the little section where I've shifted it and you can see some of the glue on the felt. That is something to keep in mind because when that glue hardens, it's really hard to pass your needle through it. So, you know, try to avoid that if you can. I probably should have fiddled with placement before I ever, ever put the glue on. Um, but it's just something to be aware of when you're working with that glue because it'll make the felt later on really hard. And now that I've got it positioned where I want, I just choose a space, just choose a point that I'm comfortable with. Uh, that's close to where the thread is exiting the felt and then I just start like I did with the previous stone Now I'm going to show you something here Where you can notice that the beads didn't stack well There's like these spaces between them and usually that's an issue with tension with the thread um, Or sometimes it's the shape of the stone. It's a really weird shaped stone uh, and it can cause some issues with how the, the beads lay against one another. So what I'm really doing once I get it all bezeled, once I get all the rows on, I go back down, travel that thread back through the rows, and I want to close those spaces. So I'm going to go through the bead in the, the second row, and then I'm going to run my needle through the bead below it in the first row to really pull those two beads together. Hopefully you can see it better than I'm explaining it because I'm, I know I'm making a mess of it as I'm explaining it here. But when you pull that thread after threading through those two beads, you really pull it, pull that stitch together so that it's nice and stacked. So then I'm going to move on to that next space. So I'm going through that second bead, the, in the order of the bead in the second row from one direction. And then I'm going to go to the bead below it, see this bead here, and I'm going to go through that bead in the opposite direction. Kind of like you're stitching a little square, pulling those two beads together. And you can do this wherever you see a little gap and it works wonders. So I'm going to do this all the way uh, around this one side where this issue seemed to have occurred uh, the most or where it's the most noticeable. And that, folks, completes um, part one of this seed bead embroidered project. I'm going to set that third stone, bezel that third stone off camera. Um, and then part two is going to be all about embellishments and trim and really just finishing off your piece. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again with part two.